Are you ready to stop the self-sabotage and create the life you desire? Well, in order for that to happen, you need to break free from the bad beliefs that are holding your success hostage. You need to optimize the stress by turning it into extra energy for success. And those hurtful habits? Well, we need to give that pain a purpose for progress. Welcome to Stop the Self-Sabotage and Create the Life You Desire podcast. Has this ever happened to you? You go in for a massage, uh, so looking forward to the relaxation. And as soon as the therapist lays her hands on your back, she's like, "Mm -mm. you are so locked up. There is no way we're going to get you to relax today unless we get you to release first. Yeah, uh, when you hear those words, you know it's not going to be a relaxing massage. That it's going to be, how can we get you to open back up? Think of it like this. Uh, Something happens and you tense up. Say you tense up your hand. You, You wake up late and you tense up your hand and then you release it. Uh, and you open up your phone and you see a text message from work and you're already running late and now they need you in there even earlier and you tense up again, but then you, you let go, uh, then going into work, maybe there's a traffic jam for some of you. It's just between the, uh, bathroom and the home office, but maybe there's a lot of people who need your attention and you're tensing up and you're letting go. But each time you let go, you don't go back to the original position. You, you just open up a little bit less than what you did before. It's not going to take very long before your hand, because I was using that as an example, is no longer opening up at all. It's now clenched into a fist. And it's not things that happen to us physically that will do this. It's the mental and the emotional. Also, you cannot receive when you're stuck in reacting. Reactions are based on past pain. Responses are based on future impact. But to be in a response-able state, you have to be able to let go of what got you all hyped up to start with. So I want you to be able to accept suggestions of success, whether they're auto suggestions, you give them to yourself or you work with someone else. I want you to have the greatest likelihood that you're going to take on those suggestions and use them as stepping stones to your next level of accomplishment. But in order to do that, we have to get you to open up. Have you ever noticed somebody upset And someone else walks up to him and says, oh, it's going to be okay. Just calm down. Are they accepting that suggestion? No. See, you'll only accept suggestions that go along with your current emotional state. And your emotions show up in your body. So if the body's locked up, your emotions and your mind are, are also in that place. So Whenever I went in for my massage and she's like, there is no way. I knew what was going on. It is because I had put myself in some very uncomfortable situations on purpose, physically, emotionally, and mentally to be able to master my next level of success. I can't have it dependent on how easy life is going to be because in case you haven't noticed, It's not, and it is not going to get any easier. We have to become better. So I put myself in some really awkward situations for performance, and it was showing up in my body. This is the reason why I went in for the massage, but before I could feel good, I had to release. All right, so 
For you to accept suggestions, you have to match the emotional state that you're in. If you're upset, if you're angry, if you're ticked off, if you're disappointed, then use that. Don't try to get rid of it. Say, okay, what are these emotions and their corresponding physical counterparts trying to tell me? What needs to be addressed? Now, I knew with talking to the massage therapist, as well as my chiropractor last week, I have to get back into some serious stretching if I'm going to keep moving up into these levels of performance. And it's not just physical, it's mental and emotional. Now, for a lot of people, they're stretching themselves mental and emotional, but they're not doing anything with their body. You have to do all three. Okay, so once you ask yourself, how can I use this? I ask myself, how can I use being locked up? And it's like, okay, what this is telling you is that you need to start opening yourself more, not just after, but before the activity. So get the message that the emotion has for you, and then it'll be able to move through you and out. Then after that, you can look, look at releasing it. There's no need to release an emotional state if you haven't gotten the message because it'll just keep coming back. So it's what we call as hypnotists a body scan. And most body scans start with, oh, taking a deep breath and now relax. And anytime I've been in that situation and someone tells me that, I'm like, "Mm mm-hmm, yeah, not happening. I need to let go. I need to release before I can receive. And it's the same way with you. We've got to get that hand open back up. So you can move through the various areas of your body from the top of your head to the tips of your toes. And you can be releasing the stress, tension, and strain. Now, stress, tension, and strain are very good because they give us messages. Think of it like this. Stress is what we go under or go through to improve our performance. You have to get into the gym or out on the trails and go farther or lift more than what you did before. You have to stress your body to improve your performance. So stress is very healthy. And in doing the body scan and saying, I'm letting go of any stress, tension, or strain, I'm getting the message from the stress. The stress has actually shown up to help me improve my performance. And then there's tension. Tension is very functional. Whenever we need to tighten up to get ready to push off of a starting line and get out ahead of others. So we do need to tense up. If you you think about a sprinter and uh, they're getting ready to run their race, those muscles are tense. And then we have strain. Strain lets us know when the stress and tension is getting ready to go too far. It's actually a warning signal that says we need to do something about this because it is no longer for our benefit. It's now holding us back. We've taken it too far. So you can actually program yourself that stress and tension are something you're going to seek out in a healthy functional way, but that strain will always be there to give you the message when it's getting ready to go too far and you're getting ready to injure yourself, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally. Okay. So for the body scan that you might want to do before you deliver suggestions, is allowing yourself to release the stress, tension, and strain because you understand the message of it now. Whatever you were experiencing just a moment ago, 
you get it, you're now going to use it. And so that way you can release from the top of your head to the tips of your toes. Then after that, you can start the relaxation. When I work with a client in private session, this is the exact order I use for their hypnotic success. So step one is the body scan, but we always look at letting go before we then bring in a new element, which is going to be the relaxation, starting at the bottom of the feet all the way to the top of their head. Then after that, step two, to have yourself opened to suggestion. You want to look at What state were you experiencing? Was it avoidance or was it amplification? Avoidance is, oh my gosh, that's going to hurt. That's going to cause me challenges. I want to get away from that. Maybe it's getting away from a bad habit, a bad relationship. That is going to be different than amplification where you're just exhausted from always putting yourself out there to make things happen. You need to know which state you were in because if you were in avoidance of, I need to to get away from this stress and so I've been engaging in this bad habit like overeating, well, you sure in the heck aren't going to accept any suggestions that say, get rid of overeating, are you? Uh Uh-uh, because the brain and the body think that you have to have that overeating to get away from the overwhelm you were experiencing. Uh, And if you were really putting yourself out there, you were going after your goal and you're just getting a little burnt and toasty because you've superseded by far your capabilities, you're in amplification well, then you're not going to accept suggestions of getting away from your goal and taking a break and doing a little mini vacay in your mind. No, your brain's going, we need to move forward. We need to make this happen. Can we just slow down the pace a little bit? So it's important for you to know which direction you're going. All right. Uh, that is step number two for certified hypnotists. Uh, and this is one of the biggest ways I'm an instructor. I train others. And um, this is one of the biggest screw ups I see a lot of certified hypnotists make is that they do not use a proper induction, introducing the suggestible state to go along with what the client was experiencing as far as avoidance or amplification. And so they've got a peak performer, a high achiever, and they're going, oh, relax to a beautiful place. And the peak performer is going, I might lose my edge. Okay, how is this going to assist me? So instead, I can have them walking up a beautiful mountain trail at a slower pace, still going to the peak but enjoying everything that's going on around them, loving the changing scenery as they go up to those higher elevations. Is this making sense? Okay. But if someone comes into me for a bad habit, like stress eating, uh, fear of public speaking, any phobia or fear, boy, there's been a lot of those that have come up and we all know the reason why, because when you've got, uh, Every media outlet promoting fear, 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 the brain is going to look for all the things to avoid, right? So when you're in avoidance, I've got to take you to a place to where it is your sanctuary and you can settle for a little bit to, to feel like you've got some firm footing underneath you. You're not climbing up the mountainside because you feel like you've been going through the valley of death here recently. We need you to be able to be in a place of peace and tranquility and give you rest. Okay. Uh, then step number three, you want to be able to magnify the emotions that you're experiencing. It's what's known as a deepener. 
Now, don't think of a deepener like a, a standard hypnotist where you've got to walk down steps. I very rarely do that. I have most people um, count down or count up depending on are they in amplification or avoidance. So you want to amplify the experience that you're having of feeling good, whatever it might be. Now, this is not necessary for the success of accepting suggestions. Mm -mm, No, because you can start accepting suggestions as soon as you let go of the stress and then introduce relaxation, you're already accepting suggestions. The reason why you want to deepen the suggestible state, and that's all hypnosis is. It means to be hypersuggestible. The reason why you want to deepen it is to take authority over your emotions, to prove that you're the one who's in control of your focus, of how you feel, and how you're going to move forward. For way too long, things on the outside of you have been telling you what you're going to have in an internal world. It's time for you to take your power back. And so you begin to set up that authority by saying, okay, I am going to magnify this. Now, maybe you're only able to increase the feel goods 5%, 10%. That's okay. What if you could increase it 5 or 10% every single week? Well, it wouldn't be very long before it would be a rare occurrence for you to be triggered by something outside of you. Okay, the fourth step is not something that you would have to do for you to accept suggestions, but it is necessary whenever you're working with a facilitator like myself. And it's what's known as a test and convincer. See, there's six levels of hypnosis. I talked about this last week. And the deeper you go into these levels does not mean your session will be more successful. It's Aaron's depth scale. It just says, are you going to the appropriate level to accept the suggestions that are going to be delivered? And for most people, a level one to a level two, which are the two lightest levels. One is when you zone out and you're driving your car, just to give you an example, or or loading the dishwasher or fo- folding laundry, and you're, you zone out and you start thinking about other things. That's a level one. Uh, d- level two is a light daydreaming state. You may not be engaged in the activities, but You're in a place to where you can allow your mind to wander to some wonderful experiences in an observer mode. By the way, if you start stepping into them, that's a level three to a level four. That's how easy it is to go to these places where you are going to accept suggestions. Hung up there for a moment. Sorry, guys. So a level one to a level two behavioral modification, a level two to a level three emotional optimization, taking that overwhelm and actually riding it to your next level of success. And then a level three to a level four upgrades on what you believe about yourself. Always start with the simple first. That's going to be a level one to a level two. Okay, which is going to be behavioral modification. Once you feel like you've got a handle on that, then you can move into level two to level three. I typically tell people work with um, suggestions one level at a time for about a week. And then the next week, move on to the next one, as long as you feel like you are making progress on the first one. You don't have to have it resolved. You're just making progress. All right. Test and convincer is whenever your certified hypnotist will test to see what level you're at. And then uh, something known as amplification by realization takes place. That once you're like, oh, my gosh. Something really is happening. 
then you discover just how in control you are of your focus, feelings, and actions for impact. And then your certified hypnotist will transfer that power from them to you. It's known as transfer of authority. They're like, okay, look at what you've created, what you're experiencing. Well, it's been created by you and you alone. I simply delivered a few suggestions. You are the one who has taken those suggestions and turned them into your reality. I wonder how else you'll be able to be in control from here on and take whatever suggestions you want to experience and turn them into your reality. Not because I say so, but because it's based on the power of your own mind. That is taken directly from me working with every first-time client. You typically won't do that when you're doing this for yourself. So test four is when you're working with a facilitator. Uh, Test four. Level four, number four. Number five, hypnotic prescription. This is when you start delivering suggestions for yourself. You need to have two types of suggestions. You need to have direct and indirect. Direct Say, I'm going to do this because I value this. Values can be seen as categories of overarching attitudes. And so we might have an attitude of freedom. Uh, And so that's going to be a value. We will value taking action on things that are are going to have us experience freedom. Or maybe it's prosperity. So we have an attitude of prosperity. How can I be blessed and then be a blessing for others? And we'll take on that attitude. Emotions are what runs your subconscious mind. Your subconscious is in charge of every single habit and pattern you have in place. Now, it used to be 17 years ago when I started in this industry that we went by the 80-20 rule. Uh, 80% of our life was repeated habits and patterns. Wow. And then 20% was conscious decision. I don't know if it was Harvard, Stanford, Yale about 10 years ago said, we want to update this. And actually, we believe that the subconscious mind runs 99.003% of our lives. (laughs) I'm going to go with the 80-20 rule, okay? But it doesn't matter if it's 80% or 99%. If you do not have subconscious agreement on your suggestions, you can give yourself all the affirmations that you want and they're never going to work, which is why they've been scientifically, behaviorally proven to fail because you don't have subconscious agreement. See, the subconscious goes by values. Most people will have 10 values in life. Eight of them will be negative. Two of them will be progress oriented. And almost all of them will have been given to you by age eight. Not based on you and your brilliance, but based on the people in authority around you, what they valued. And so you learn to live by their values and then values have rules. Okay, so so you need to start looking at what do you value? And is it avoidance values? Oh, don't upset people. Okay, that's, that's avoidance, not amplification. So if you have a value, of do not up uh, of not upsetting anyone do not upset upsetting anyone yeah oh that that's good or english isn't it <laughs> okay so if you have a value ah oh, of making everybody happy i'm not going to tell you to get rid of it because you can't but you can upgrade it so 
maybe what you want to do now is start giving yourself direct suggestions that you know what? I know that I value everyone being happy. So I am now going to start with me and it'll ripple out from me. So when I make myself happy, then I'm able to allow that emotion to show up and have others catch it from me. See, there's something that's more viral than any germ out there and it's emotions. We can pass emotions from ourselves to somebody next to us in one thousandth of one second, faster than you can blink your eye. Eyes? Yeah. Okay. So I'm not saying do not be a people pleaser, but instead learn to start pleasing yourself and instead of taking actions that are are going to be dysfunctional and detrimental to you because you're sacrificing yourself for someone to be pleased, and you know they won't because it's not empowering them. Instead, you're giving yourself the suggestion that they're going to catch happiness from you. You're not doing it for them because when you do an emotion for someone else, they can't hold on to it. But when they catch it from you, they now have a choice that they can hold on to it for as long as it will benefit them. Now, some people won't want to catch happiness from you because they are determined to be a victim. And so they're always going to need somebody to rescue them. Okay. It's not up to you how they hold on to it. It is up to you to create the experience based on who you're being. We don't look at the world being better. We look at you being better. That's my job for you. I serve you by creating the sacred space for you to turn on your brilliance even brighter. If you don't want to do anything with that sacred space, that's fine. But it is my job to create the experience for you and then teach you how to create it for yourself. Okay, so you have direct suggestions for your values. So I'm doing this because I value this. But then you also need to give yourself suggestions that are known as indirect for motivators. And we have five motivators. I always like using the hand form. Uh, For those of you in the U.S. who were raised in uh, primary school with putting your hand on a piece of paper around Thanksgiving and then drawing around your hand and making a turkey for Thanksgiving, think of your motivators the same way. So the thumb is status. And we're always looking at, are we up? Or are we down? Is the thumb up or is the thumb down? Then we have the index finger, which is control. Are we pointing it at other people, places, and things going, when you do this, I'll be happy? Or are we pointing it at ourselves and saying, I'm the one in control of my focus, feelings, and uh, actions for impact? Then we have the middle finger. The middle finger is autonomy. It is your ability to experience beauty and freedom and creative expression and you already know when uh, always know when you feel like that has been taken away from you because you want to flip somebody that middle finger then the ring finger is relationships uh that this is how you relate to others you're doing it for yourself as well as them and then the pinky finger is going to be what's just in the world what's fair what's true now out of this five you are going to have one primary and one backup and here is a bonus tip for you the the two fingers on your hand, the ring finger and the pinky finger, those are the two weakest on your hand. Well, it's also the weakest motivators. So if you have one of those, it'll always be paired up with one of the first three. So we have indirect suggestions because 
of our motivators. If you're status oriented, is this going to help you feel like you're at a higher place so you can lift others up? Is it going to help you feel more in control? Is it going to give you that experience of freedom? Is the relationships because you're going to show others uh, how to lead their own lives? You're going to be able to influence them that way? Or is it going to be for what's true in the world and that you're shining the light on your truth and if others want to join you uh, so you can ignite their brilliance, you can do so. And this is where stories come into play. This is when you want to look at whatever suggestion you're giving yourself. How is this story going or how is this suggestion going to be played out in a story that helps you overcome the evil villain on the outside as well as your own internal blocks that have been holding you back on the inside? So outside and inside, the story needs to be there. That's indirect suggestions. They're given through a story, but that story needs to then focus on your two primary motivators. If you're not motivated by relationships, you do not want to be giving yourself suggestions about how you want to hit maybe this next income level because you're going to be able to take everybody to the amusement park. Uh, no, you'll never be motivated to do that. Okay. Uh, then post-hypnotics. Post-hypnotics are suggestions that you will give yourself of things that will continue to reinforce your success. You've got permissive and you've got authoritative. So permissive is something that you're going to run across in your daily life. Water running, uh, phones ringing, seeing the color green with the grass and the trees. If it's in the middle of winter, don't use that color. Okay, but these are things that you're going to tell yourself that every time you experience it, only use one, every time you experience it, your mind will find additional ways for you to be fill in the blank with your suggestions. Uh, then you have authoritative. Authoritative is going to be a key word. It is going to be an action you take that whenever a challenging situation shows up, you're going to take your power back from it. So you also want to give yourself an authoritative post-hypnotic suggestion that says, when this happens, Mm, I'm doing this. I'm going to give myself this keyword or I'm going to take this action and it's going to be, I'm the one in control. I determine my status, my power, my freedom, how others are going to benefit because it's based on my truth and what is brilliant about me. And then you coming back to an aware state after doing all of this where you're going to reinforce the suggestions that you've been giving yourself. All of this can take place in as little as 10 minutes. If you're going to do it for yourself, I would recommend no, no more than 20. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of options here, and then we're going to wrap up with your plan of action. If you want to know the exact system and have all of this written out for you, the exact scripts that I use with my own private clients, go to drewdawnferguson.com forward slash SH, stands for self-hypnosis. And I teach you through this course, online virtual course, go at your own pace, how to do all of this for yourself. Now, if you decide that you want to work with me because you don't have time to work first on your actions and then your emotions and then what you believe about what you can achieve, you want to do it all at once because you have got some goals to get after and you want to turn those dreams into your reality, then reach out to me. We'll discuss if I'm a good fit for you for a private session and I will add in this course as a bonus for you. You can reach me at 1-636-699-7791. You can either uh, voicemail me or you can text me. 
just tell me you want a consult and um, I'll, I'll get back with you with a couple of times I've got available. If you leave me a voicemail or text me, tell me your time zone. Okay. Uh, 1-636-699-7791. So let's wrap all of this up. You want to be able to give yourself suggestions that you're going to receive. You cannot do that when you are stuck in a reaction state. So the very first thing you have to do is get the message of what you've been experiencing, of why you've been going into these reactions. Remember, reactions are based on past pain. Responses are based on future impact. You cannot be response able until you've gotten the message of what's happening. So once you do that, then use that message to then formulate your suggestions for moving forward. And if I can assist you, reach out to me, whether it's drewdonferguson.com forward slash SH self hypnosis or 1636-699-7791. But it is time for you to open up and receive everything you're meant to, to experience in the world so you can be better in it. Until we get together again, blessings on your journey.